Uh, this is uh, Derwin King with uh, Sampson Community College, and we are having our ELC 111 Intro to Electricity class. And um, we are going to be uh, reviewing on Chapter 3 series circuits today. We covered it um, last session, um, but it, 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 it does need some reviewing, and we're going to do some uh, work through some circuit examples today, doing calculations, doing some measurements uh, through the camera. And uh, so we're going to get started here. Um, let me, let me uh, pull up the PowerPoint. And go here, give me, give me a minute to get my, my screen set up. Yep. How's everybody doing, by the way? Got that, and handouts we have on law. All righty, so we are okay. Do y'all see the PowerPoint now? Hello? Yes, I see it. Okay, yes. good, good. Now, so we're gonna go back over again and make good and sure everybody understands the, the rules for the rules for series. Okay. Now for series circuits, you got three three rules, and the first one would be that the sum of the voltage drops that's across each resistor or load which could be light bulbs, heater elements, resistors, it could be any, any type of load, you know. The, the voltage drops across each one of those loads, if you add them all up, they equal the source voltage. And the source voltage in this case is called e, ET or E sub T for E total. And E1 would be the voltage drop directly across the first resistor or load, and then E2 would be measured directly across the second one and so on. Which in this case here, if you go, if let me let me flip forward to one now. Here, the E1 would be a voltmeter. Okay, so it would be like taking a meter, and E1 would be a voltmeter that you place across R1. Everybody follow? Hold on a second, Mr. Durwood. My computer's gone crazy. I've got you in like a little thing, and I can't get what you're actually showing bigger. All right, so do you see the PowerPoint? I can barely see that. There we go. All right, got you now. Got it. So if you double click okay. on it, it, it'll make it bigger. Yeah. Is, is that what you did? Yeah. Good. All right, all good now. Great. Sorry about that. Uh-huh. Good. You speak up because I, I don't know on your end if you're seeing or, or hearing, if, if it gets to where my audio gets not good please say something because this is this is a uh, a real touchy thing doing what we're doing and I, I depend on you to tell me when something's not right um so is nicholas can you hear me good yes sir benjamin how about you yes sir i can hear you good 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 great let me give y'all credit for being in here Nicholas, Louise, and Benjamin. Thank you. Thank y'all for coming. All right. So the with the e the e one that circle up there, that that's going to represent a meter, a voltmeter, like y'all use at school when you put it across that resistor, okay, or or light bulb or whatever it may be, that you would measure. That would be e one, which would be the two volts, because in this case, we've got. For, uh, three resistors of the same resistance. Now, again, they could be heater elements like this that are resistors. These are like big power resistors. And, you know, resistors come in in different, different sizes. You know, you have the resistors 
in your hair dryer. You know, uh, Louise, if you, if you use a hair dryer. Yes. Okay, your hair dryer is a resistor. Okay, it, it, it's, it's just like this right here. But what you have is, is when you cut the hair dryer on, you have a fan and you have a heater element. And so the fan blows across the heater element. If you, when you cut the hair dryer on, if you look in the face of it, you'll see some little coily wires in there glowing red, won't you? You see those glow red? Yes. Possibly. So that's a heater element. And um, actually, if you take your heater element, and if you take your hair dryer and unplug it from the wall and cut the switch on with it unplugged and put, a, put an ohm meter across the two terminals, then you can actually read through the switch and through the, the heater element in the hair dryer and back out and through a thermostat. There's a thermostat in there too that, that if it gets above a certain temperature, it's gonna pop open. It's a normally closed thermostat. This is safety. So if it gets too hot, it's gonna pop open and it'll, it'll, it'll cut it off. But, but you can read the ohms on your hair dryer. If, again, if you unplug it, put your meter leads on the two prongs, cut the switch on, and you can get the ohms off of there. Um, if you want to try that, do you have a meter at home? No. Okay. Um, anyway, it's something you can try. And then also on your on your stove, your stove top and inside the oven, they're all heater elements. So you've got four on, on, on top that are literally heater elements unless you're using gas. And then in the oven, you've got a large, uh, uh, a circular type but in a pattern of heater element in there, um, actually top and bottom because you do broil and bake. So for broil and bake, you've got two separate, you know, you have uh, underneath and on top heater elements in there. So everywhere you look, everywhere, a crock pot, how many of you have a crock pot? Same thing, you can unplug that, cut your crock pot on, unplug it, leave the switch on so you can get a continuity reading through there. You can read the ohms of that. And um, so these resistors are everywhere you look in your house, you know, in your vehicle, you know, for heating, everything is it's just everywhere. So anyway, the rules would be this. Whatever the voltage is down there, it's six volts. That six volts gets divided up evenly among those three loads. And, and if you read voltage across them, it's going to be two volt, two volt, and two volt. You add them all up, it's going to be six, okay? So, um... In your worksheet, you'll need to explain the three rules, and that will be one of them. You can actually put it, when, when you do it in the, in the worksheet, you can express it like this. You can simply say ET equals E1 plus E2 plus E3. You can do it in a formula form instead of having to put it in words if you want to do that. And that'll make it a lot simpler, you know. Um, but you can, you can put it in words, you know, or you can do both. You know. Um, so, does does everybody understand what what any questions about what we're looking at there? And then the current, the the amps that would flow through that circuit, is calculated. How do we calculate the current? How, how did they come up with that 0.5 amps there? Can somebody tell me how they calculated that? Resistance. Resistance is four. What what'd you say? I heard a little something there. How about that, that, that triangle there? What do we do with the triangle there? How, how do we calculate the, 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 the uh, current? Volts divided by resistance. Volts divided by resistance. E over R will give you I. So if I, if I, if I cover up the I, if I cover up the I, it's going to be e, e over R equals I, right? The current. Yes. But it is, you know, whenever we do that, 
we know we, we want to use the total the total voltage and the total resistance, right? If we're going to get total current, the the I T means I, I total would be total current. And so you have to use the total voltage, which would be six divided by, and how do, how do we arrive at our total being 12 ohms? Because you have because we, more. You have the three resistors and they're four ohms each. So you add them together and that gives you the 12 ohms. Exactly. Now let's let's go over let's go over uh, an example of how that works on a real board. Do you see my camera good? Yes. Do y'all see those three resistors right there? Yes. Now I'm going to get, I'm taking my power, my power source out, out, out of the circuit there so that I'm going, I'm going from one resistor into the other one and I, and out of this one into this one. And then, and I, but I'm not going anywhere. I don't have a power source going into them. Okay. So let's go over um, the, the, let me get my meter on. Can somebody tell me on the meter, what do I go to to check resistance on that meter right there? Which, which, which position would I go to? The omega sign. The omega sign, exactly. Right. And I'll throw something extra in here too. This is a very nice meter right here. It's a, it's a Fluke uh, 1587 insulation multimeter. It, it does a lot of stuff. It can check in, insulation on wires to see if you got cracks in it and all. <clears throat> now. Nice. Yeah, it, where you're at, Louise, if you have a motor, if you have a motor that is partially shorted out, but not like, not the, not maybe not a real severe short, but something that, that's causing causing a, a starter to trip out periodically, or or a breaker refuse to trip out sometimes. And the motor has it really shorted completely out, but it's got a partial short in it. This here, the insulation test can find it, and we'll we'll get into the, into using that in in January in motor controls in okay. the motor in the, in the motor control class. Now. The omega sign, if you, if you look at it, just so, just so you'll know, that's in the white there. In the blue, that's the second function on this dial. If I hit the blue button, look at what happens. It changes over from mega ohms to F is farads for capacity. Nano farads, N N F is nano farads, and nano is, is a very small unit, a uh, uh, metric prefix that's very very tiny. Um, the the uh, it's ten to the minus nine. It, anyway, but but farads is 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 a capacitor. That blue symbol is a capacitor symbol, and capacitors can be tested by hitting the blue button and then using your test leads. To check across a capacitor, you can actually see how many farads it has. So, um, I just was showed you that that uh, some of these have second functions on there. You know, um, this one measures millivolts DC. A millivolt would be a thousandth of a volt. It, but if you hit the blue button, it actually measures temperature in Fahrenheit. If you put if you put a temperature probe plug, plug in into the leads here, actual uh, temperature probe. It'll actually read Fahrenheit. It, it, it turns into a, to a thermometer. But uh, let's go back to ohms here, and it it, it actually auto ranges up to mega ohms now, it, until until you connect to a circuit, and then it's going to auto range down to the appropriate range that that you're connected to. Um, so if you watch here, I'm going to go across one one resistor, and what does it say? 
105.2. Now, does it say mega ohms or k ohms, or does it just say ohms? I can't read any can't any read of the it. small stuff. Right, let, me, let me get let me get closer then. Let me get a, a position to where hopefully you can see better. Okay. Now you see, when I take the leads off, you're going to see the meter auto range. Well, it went through K and went up to mega. So it actually tried in the mega ohm range and it can't read anything because I don't, I don't have the leads connected. I got an OL, which means over limit. It means it's over the limit of the mega ohm range. It can't read that high. So it's an open circuit here. Now watch what happens. You'll see, you'll see the display click from M down to K and then it can't find a K ohm reading and then it goes, it's below that, then it goes down, it drops the metric prefixes and it just goes to plain home. So watch it. Watch that closely. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay. You see it change? Uh-huh. So it found the appropriate range. It, it, it actually adjusted the range by itself. It's called auto ranging. And now we're at 105.2 105, ohms. Now look at here. Now I'm going to go to the second resistor and let's read it. And what do you see? 104.2. Okay, now. And then let's go to the third one. One oh six point six. Now let's watch what happens if I measure from one through the other one, and I measure just two of those in series, what do I get? 211.3. So that's, you see how they add together? Yes. So the, the, the nominal value for these is 100 ohms a piece, but they have a tolerance of 10%. The silver band means 10%. So they are, they are within 10% by they could be as high as 110 ohms and still be intolerance. It's 105, so it's the intolerance for what for what it for what it's rated with a silver band on there. And when you put the two together, you actually get the total. Now, what happens if I measure if the measure all three of them together? I go here, I go here, and now what what do I have now? Uh, Mr. King, you're it's like you're trying to call somebody off of your off of Zoom. Yeah, somebody's got a lot of noise, a lot of wind noise. Um, who is that that just came, that just came in with a phone with a telephone? Uh, that was me, Mr. Uh, who? McGill. McGill. Yes, sir. Are you inside the plant? No, I'm inside the box room. You're inside the box it's room? A lot of noise. It's a lot of noise. Can you get in a quiet room? Yeah, okay. Give me a minute. I'll go to another place. He's he's still at work. He's trying to join, but it's 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 so noisy it's gonna be it's gonna be an interruption like that. Okay. He'll find somewhere quiet to get in. But but look, look here. Do, do y'all see what's going on? If I check, if I check uh, uh, through the, the entire thing there, what do I get? 317. So, so it's, it added them all together. It, it, it does. And I can check just across these two. And I'm getting I'm getting the total of of of, 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 of R2 and R3 together gives you about 210. You know, so everybody see how, how that works? Yes. So that that takes you to the actual, what we just saw right there.
is they give it as the last rule that our total would be R1 plus R2 plus R3, and then however many of them there are, there could be, uh, there could be any number of them, and you just add them directly, and it's going to give you that R total. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. Okay. And um, and then, as far as the current goes, you get the same exact current through every one of them. Think of it like a pipeline. Um, and if you had things that were sharing the same water line and you had them uh, piped in in series, they get the same flow rate of, of, of liquid that may be going through a pipeline. If you get two gallons per minute through here, it's going to be the same thing no matter where you check the flow rate at. So your flow rate in, in, in amps is going to be the same every, everywhere, no matter where you measure it at. So in, in there, we took um, with, the, with the triangle, we took the, um, When we, uh, do y'all see the Ohm's Law triangle now? Yes. So if you cover up the I down there, it's going to be E over R equals I for current. So volts, volts over resistance. And we go back. And there we are. So the volts would be six volts, and then R total would be 12. And so six divided by 12 is going to give you 0.5. And that same current flows all through that circuit, no matter where you're at, okay? Um, now the current, the current can be measured, the way you're doing it here at the school is you're doing it with a current clamp. You're, put, you're putting the clamp around the wire, right? Yes. Now there's, a, there's also a way of doing it with, a, with some meters can do it in line. Um, and in some cases you need to do it in line if it's a very, very small amount of current. And um, I can show you how that's actually wired in. When you do an inline, an inline current meter or inline amp meter, uh, the book mentions that if you're going to measure current with a with a traditional meter, it has to be done in series. So I'll show you how how that how that will be wired in. So this circuit right here, if I go back, and put there. The power that enters into here is coming in from, from right there. That's your 12 volts. I'm going to trace it back and show you where I'm getting it from. It's coming from a power supply. And let me get something here out of the way. Now, so if you see, I'm gonna take you, take you by the connections here. This DC power supply where we're getting our 12 volts from, it has, it has a plus connector right down here, that one, okay? Everybody see that? So we're coming out of that, yeah. we're coming out of that. And instead of going straight from the power supply, straight to the circuit, we're gonna go through an inline ammeter. Now watch this. So we're taking our hot, our positive DC here, and we're gonna go up to this meter here that can actually read current with, with actually a hardwired connection. And so let's go here, like this. Now this meter here has a, a 10 amp jack that's actually a physical jack. You see that? Uh -huh. It also has a milliamp jack. It, it can read up to 300 milliamps on that range and up to 10 whole amps in that range. And so if, if you're gonna do an inline, an inline ammeter, then you go from the power source like that. And then you wanna go into the amp jack. And then you leave the common so the actual current flows through the meter. We're not checking volts, but we're actually checking amps. A, A for amps in a straight line means DC. And then amps AC with the wave. Can you see that pretty good? 
Everybody see that? Can you read it pretty clear? Say that again. We're going from the power. We're going from the power source here, the 12 volt power source, into into the into the 10 amp jack there. Okay. You see? Can you can you read it? Yeah, I see where it says 10 amps. You go into there. You not you know you don't don't go into volt jack like you would normally do. For a regular reading volts, you know you would go in. in, in if you were going to be reading volts or ohms, you would go into where it says V in the horseshoe. In, in that jack, we're not going to that one. We're going into where it says amps. Okay. Now this is a meter that's got functions on it that the, the ones you've been using at school does not have the amp jacks. It does it with a clamp. Okay. But the drawback is the one that you use with a clamp, it won't read DC amps. So let me just show you on there the reason why reason why I'm showing you this. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Amanda. Um, now, so the, here, here's one meter that you were using already at the school. Remember, remember this one? Uh -huh. Now look, look closely here. So that's the one that you've been you've been using at school. Plus, you've been using. This one, right? So uh -huh. this one, this one here. What do you see as far as amps? What does it say? What does it say? Right. This this meter will this not meter read, will not read. It won't read DC amps. It's not really common to read DC amps. So on a basic meter like that, they didn't include that function. You pay more. You, hey, you'll pay more. They, they got it figured out to where they only going to give you just uh, just enough features for a basic meter at, at this price. You know, and you know, of course, they're in it to make a living. So if you're going to get more, more features on there, see, but this will read. It will read AC and DC volts. You see that? It will read DC volts and AC volts, but on current, it'll only read AC amps. And then on okay. ohms, it, it, on ohms, it only goes up to one kilo ohm or a thousand ohm. So, so you're talking about a hundred and thirty dollar meter here, and then that's and it's a good meter, but that's all you're going to get with it. Okay. Now, so if you switch over to the other meter, another one that you've been using, let's just look at what what the um what what is what is the range? What can you do with it? So you pay a little bit more for this one, okay? So look at here on the amps. What do you see? Uh, AC. And it even tells you on the disc. You see that? AC amp? Yeah. Uh huh. Now, so this meter, the one you use in the shop, it will not work on DC amps. But look here on volts now. If I go to volts, the wave is AC. Now look on the screen. It says AC volts. You see it? Now let's go to DC volts. The straight line is DC. Now what do you see there? DC volts. DC. Right. So the, the 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 more basic meters, they're always going to read DC and A, and DC DC and AC volts. You got to have that. You 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 have you you've got to have that. They don't make a meter that won't do that as far as a multimeter. A multimeter is the one that's got, you know, you know, volts, amps, ohms. All multimeters are going to have AC and DC volts, but but only the more expensive ones are going to read DC amps. Now, if you're doing automotive work or working on forklifts and things like that, you know, you're going to have to have one that, that does read DC amps. Or if you're in a plant that's this, this got DC motors, you got to have a meter to read it, and you pay more to get a clamp that can read DC. It costs more. Okay. And I've got, 
a clamp meter that'll do DC and it's um it's actually at home where I'm teaching a Zoom class from home. I, I have to bring it and let you see it. But I've got a more expensive one that was around five hundred dollars. It'll do DC. Okay, it's got a special special clamp on there anyway. So let's uh, uh, close this out and let me just uh, get back to the heart of what we were doing because I know time's ticking here. Um, So when you when you go in in for current and then and then you go out you you, you leave out out of the common jack so you go into amp jack and you go out and then you go out of the common. Everybody got that? Well, we're going to do a hardwired yeah. a hardwired ammeter function. So then you leave out of the common, and then you go then you go to the circuit. Then you go to the circuit where the the power is going to enter in. So basically. That power goes in, into the meter here, and it goes out of here. The, 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 the positive 12 volt goes in here. That same 12 volt comes out of here, like this. And then you go to the circuit where it, where it needs that 12 volt sound, okay? So the current is actually flowing through the meter like, like water flowing through it, okay? So that's what you call a series in series. It's actually connected in series. Um, I did a little a little drawing here. You see you see my drawing? Yeah. Yes. So the drawing shows a power source. It shows a power source. Let me get, let me get my hand steady here. It shows a power source there of 120 volt. And then I, I inline ammeter to where you actually break the circuit where I, where I put the X at. You actually got to break that circuit, break the hot wire that goes to that bulb. You got to interrupt it and send that send that power through the meter. And, and if you notice, the meter's actually between there, isn't it? The power doesn't hook straight to the bulb. It's actually having to flow through through the meter. And then, so so for checking for checking current in line with a with a oh with a with a traditional ammeter, it has to be in series. In the series flow like that. But to check volts, of course, you check the voltmeter. You place it in parallel across the load to, to get it to get a, a voltmeter reading. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, but again, you do have to have a meter that has inline and meter jacks to be able to do that. And it, it, you know, you pay a little more to get them, but it, it is necessary in some cases to have that. Um. So um, that's why you know I included it in there. Now, um, so when I cut it on and we go up to 12 volts, you're going to see this actually read the current. Um, so let's go, we got our, our, our leads back in there. And um, let's go here for, now, we're going to cut it on. So I've got where you see the entire view now. And with, when you leave the meter in a, in a position for a long time, it'll actually go to sleep. So you actually need to cut it back off or just move move the dial so it'll wake back up because it'll conserve battery power that way. So in here, we're going to be reading amps, amps DC, A with the line, with, with the straight line versus, versus uh, the, the, the wave. Let's go back out. Now, do y'all see everything together, the, the two meters and the circuit? Yes. Yep. But we're going to turn turn the dial up on the power supply. And so you'll see me, I'm, I'm on, you have a coarse control and a fine control here. And let me see if I can get it down there where you can actually see that. You see coarse, coarse and fine? Yeah. Yes. Course gives you a fast adjustment, fine, lets you get it like dead on, whatever you want to be on, okay? That gives you like okay. a, a fast and then a slow. In other words, if I go up, watch on the course control, a little bit, a little bit of movement gives me a gives me a lot of change, okay? <clears throat> but if I want to fine tune that to six exactly, but it may be hard to do that. You know, maybe maybe it don't want to be six exactly. It's just hard to get it six exactly. 
if it was, I could go back to the fine control and tweak it back because it takes a lot more swing on the knob to make it move. And then I can have it dead on very easily by using a fine control. Everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go up to 12 volts. And actually what I found out is when I go 12 right here, if I'm dead on 12 here, here's what happens at the circuit. Because of because of the, the quick connects that are here, the banana jack, and because of these plug-ins that are on that board, those little plug-ins that are there, this is called a proto board. Uh -huh. It's a proto board. And that proto board has got plug-ins. You know, you plug them in and there's where those holes are down in there, behind the holes, each row of five holes in there, there is um Each row, each row of five holes are connected together internally in the proto board. So that set of five has a metal clip that goes across all five in there. And whatever you plug in, whatever you plug in here is connected to that automatically. So when I put 12 volts on in that hole, it sends it to the whole row of five. Everybody got it? Yep. Yes. So that, it, it puts the 12 volts into there. And then when I leave that resistor, you see how kind of loose that is? You lose a little bit of voltage in these connections. So I'm going to set it for 12 volts from out here. Yeah. Because, because of these little spring connections that are down in there, they're spring clips. And then you go out of that one into this one. You see how I've done that one? Yeah. Those two are together and then yeah. so on. Okay, everybody got the idea. Now, so what, what we'll do is... We're gonna read with this meter DC volts. So I need somebody to tell me on this meter, what do I go to now on, on, on the dial? Where do I go for DC volts? Uh, where is off the... Second one. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why, why wouldn't I go here? It's AC. Right. So this meter here, and, and it's telling you DC, isn't it? Yes. yes sir. If I go here, it's telling me. It's telling me AC millivolts. But if I if I touch it, it, it all range up higher than millivolts. If if you touch something higher than that, it goes to the lowest range. And then it'll it'll move up the milli. It'll get rid of the milli if you touch something hotter than that. But we're going to go here to DC DC volts. Now, in comparison, just so you can be uh, knowledgeable about different meters now, this meter here. What do you see right there on that volt? It does both. It does both. So it, it'll tell you on the meter. When I switch it to AC volts here, it says AC, but it's gonna change automatically to DC if I touch DC. And I'll show you how that works. So if I back off of here, just, just so you'll see how uh, a different meter works. We're going with the one that has only has one setting for volts and it says automatic selection internally. By default, it says AC, right? by default. Yes, sir. But look at what happens here now. If, if I connect to the circuit, I have my chopsticks here. You Changes. see, it, it changed the DC, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. But look, yeah. when I take my probes off, it's gonna go back to a default of AC zero. Watch it. I'm just gonna take the leads off. You see that? And I go back back to the circuit again and it, it switched over because it it's detecting it's detecting dc you see that uh-huh so that that's how that's how a automatic selection feature works on on these that it, it it'll actually tell you it'll tell you what you have which is nice this one here won't tell you 
you you got to know. But but it, what if you don't know? What if you don't know? Um, then here's what you do. You simply you simply try it on both and see do you get a voltage reading in, in either in either position before before you would say that the circuit's really dead. Okay. So so for instance, this. Um, let's say for instance that I that I went to uh, the AC by mistake. I went to AC, maybe I didn't even know what this was, okay? And I said, well, you know, hey, I, I don't know. Let's just see, is there any AC there? You know, maybe there is, maybe there's not, you know? So let's go there and see, is there any AC? And you see it going down? Let's, let, me, let me back up where you see my hands. It's picking up. It's picking up static magnetic energy in the air right now down in millivolts. You see that? MV for millivolts. So it's just picking uh -huh. up energy out of the air. It's picking up random static out of the air or, or magnetic field in the air. And right. it, it, until you until you get rid of that, if you touch these together, it, it should really clear all that out. It should go on down to zero. You see that? Yes. It'll go on down if you, if you let it let it recalculate. It's calculating further on down towards zero. It'll go down towards zero now if you leave it on there long enough. Now, so we're on we're on AC setting right now, but we have a DC circuit. So let's find out what does it tell us. And we know we got 12 volts there. So what's it saying? It's got a decreasing number there on DC volts. So basically it thinks that there's nothing there, right? Yeah. 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 You know, you're down to less, less than a millivolt. That's less than one thousandth of a volt. And it's gonna calculate right on down to zero if you leave there long enough. So the meter will not tell you, it won't tell you that you're on the wrong setting. So that's a very important thing to know about, about meters is the more features you have, the more you really got to think about what are you doing. So if you don't know what the voltage is, that's okay. Don't feel bad about that. You put it on AC and measure it. And if you get nothing, then you flip it on up to DC like this, and then you measure it again and see, you know, do, do we have anything, you know? Um, so let's go there. Come on. Let's go back. Reposition. You see the, the DC, the volts DC there, VDC? Yeah. Now, it, it tells you where your switch to, but, it, but it's not going to tell you if you're wrong. It's just not going to tell you that. So we go here, and we're going to check across the circuit coming in, and you're getting 11.89. You see that? Yeah. So you lose a little bit of voltage in these quick connects. So here's what I'll do, just, just to make the, make the experiments look right. Because I'm going to go across this one. And we know we're supposed to be getting, how much voltage are we supposed to be getting ideally across one? If we got a 12, If we got a 12 volt power supply and we got three, three resistors, how many, how many volts should be across each one? Four. Right. So look, I'm going to go across this one, and we're reading about 3.9, right? Now watch what I'm yes. going to do here. I'm going to fine tune the power supply over here until I see four volts on that, so that the readings are going to be nice and even. So I'm going to go up. And I had to go to 12.4 volts on the power supply to really give me four volts across one resistor, okay? You see that? And that was because yes. of the, the voltage losses in these quick connects. And, and, I, and, and we're just gonna make our numbers, our numbers be uh, what, they, what they should be, okay? And let's go um, here, let's go closer. Now, so let's go across the, the, the first resistor 
and we have the four volts. You see it? Yes. Let's go across the next one. Now look at here. With, with DC, it does matter where the red and the black probe is. Look at what happens on the display when I put the red down here and I put the black probe up there. What do you see? Negative. Negative. Negative four. Negative four. Now look, when I flip the leads around, what does it say? A regular four, four a, a positive four. So the meter knows the polarity, it knows the polarity of DC. So if you want to hook the positive lead up in where it actually enter, enters the device. So it, it enters into here. And so that's, gonna, that's the appropriate place to put the plus. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna read the, the third one and we're getting, we're getting a little over four volts there, okay? But if I flip the leads around and I put the positive over there, and then look at what happens. It says negative four point something, right? Yeah. So on DC circuits, it, it does matter where you put the probes. On AC circuits, you can reverse them and the meter doesn't know the difference because, because it, it, the alternating, the AC, when it alternates in, in a sound wave, it actually alternates 60 times per second. So that alternating um, each wire actually will be positive and negative in, in, in a, in a, within a cycle. And it does a whole cycle 60 times a second. So um, the, basically, let me kind of draw, draw this and, and show you. Um, let's move, move the camera. So the, the sine wave, what it's going to do is this right here. You get one complete cycle like this. Actually, I need to go down, go down two. Like that and then back up. This will be a center line right here. That's one cycle starting from here to here. And then you're going to get another cycle. That's another one. That's one cycle, two cycles. You get 60 whole cycles a second that comes from the power plant. So really a meter, a meter when you go to AC volts, that power is cycling so fast that that meter cannot, it doesn't know, it can't tell you, it doesn't know the difference when you flip the leads because it's always changing, okay? That makes sense? Yes. Okay, now. So on uh, on this circuit, is everybody cool with how the vote the voltage drops are that they add? Yes. And, and also when, when you when you when you look at it from this standpoint, like we said the, the, the other class period, if you read across one, you're getting four volts. But what happens if I move the lead to actually read across two? Then what are we what are we reading now? Eight point one two. Right. So we're reading we're reading two voltage drops, you know. And then if we then, and then if we move it over again to 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 the last uh, place there to the common, then it's twelve. Right. So as a repeat, and I, I don't mean to repeat myself so much, but but uh, here when we go in, you got you got twelve volts, right? Uh -huh. Now, what, what yes. we mean by voltage drop is this. We're going to drop four volts across that one, that one load there. So if I go check it in here, I've dropped four and now I'm down to eight. And then that eight enters into the second resistor here. And it, you know, and we have that same eight there. And so we have eight to divide and then, and then eight divided by two is going to be what? It's going to be four. So you have four left that, you know, you lost four across this one and you have four left and then that same four feeds into this one. And then it consumes, you know, it uses that four and then there's nothing left after that. You know. Everybody good? Yes. Now let's talk about the current. 
the 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 amp meter is saying point zero four amps. Okay, it's saying that. The amp meter built into the built into the power supply is saying point oh three in it. The, the, the difference is this. The way that if you had one more digit in there, you would probably find that it, it would probably say point oh three nine or something. It would be so close to where this one is rounding up, it rounded up to point oh four. And you're not seeing that third digit that would be in there. That's why there's a little difference in there. So let's calculate what would the resistance be? What is the real, what is the real R total here? Let's actually measure the real R total, okay? And let's just make, make, a, make a note here that we have 0 .04, 0 0.04 amps here, okay? Now let's, let's do this right here. We're gonna cut the, cut the voltage down. I'm gonna do that but before, anytime you use an in, a inline ammeter like that, you actually want a power down the circuit that's feeding through through the ammeter. Because what'll happen is if you don't if you don't bring that down and you cut the meter off, when you change the setting on it, what can happen is, is if you have power on here, and then you, you you cut the meter on or, or change some position, it could act, it, it, I've seen it actually pop a fuse in there. When you get a surge through the meter, when it was going through the meter that way, so you're better off on the end meter connection to power it down before, but you know, and then cut the meter on. You, know, you cut the meter on and then gradually bring the power up with the knob. You know, you would gradually gradually bring that that knob up there slowly as the current goes through and not have a surge through the meter. Because I have, I've blowed fuses in before doing that. So we got the power down, we're gonna cut the power supply off. Got a green, a green button down there that cuts it off. And now let's go back and, and, and do, let's get the real, the actual real R total off of the circuit. So the real resistance uh, total is what I, what I wanna see. And in order to do that, we're going to separate the circuit from everything else. We're going to get, get that out, out of there like that and get this out of the way. To where all we're dealing with is just the resistors themselves. And um, where do we go on the meter to check to check resistance? The Omega sign. The Omega the Omega sign. Okay, so I, we're going to do a real a real resistance reading of, of the circuit, so that we can put an actual number in there with Ohm's law to calculate the amps, so we can get an accurate number there. So we're going to check the resistance this way, and get our total. So what what are we seeing there? Three twenty three. 323 ohms, right? It doesn't say K ohms or mega ohms. It's just 323, right? So let's let's get our let's get our um let's get our notepad out. Let's get a triangle out here, and we have um our total would be 323 ohms and then the the e total we had it up to what was it about 12 and a half amp 12 and a half volts i believe yeah it was close to 12.5 volts and so we're going to calculate i we cover the i up with our finger what's what does it leave e over r e over r so it's going to be directly this right here divide divide so Y'all get your calculator out and tell me what, what would the I be? It would be, you know, I total, I total equals E total over R total, right? So what's the answer here? I'm gonna do it, do it myself here, so. Oh. So 12.5 divided by three, 323 ohms. Lord, I got a, I got a three a three out of my Look at that calculator. Look at that mess. I got a bad three there. That's not good. Well, 
just know that's not a backwards F, that's a three. That's what I got. Right. So look, it's point zero three eight. If you round, if you round that, right, what's the rules on rounding on rounding numbers? Who can tell me if I'm gonna round that decimal to the second position, what's the rule, the rule on rounding numbers? How far are you, are you gonna round up to? We're gonna round to the second position because the meter, the meter doesn't have the two, the two digits after the decimal. Oh, it's uh, 0 0.04. Right, the rules of math says this. If you're gonna round to the second position and drop all these, you, you underline the three. You underline the three, all right? So you take your your uh your point oh three eight six and so on. You underline the one that you're going to round to. You underline the three, and then you look to the right of it. And then if that number is five or greater, then you round this one up and drop the rest of it. But if that number to the right of it is less than five, you simply drop those numbers and leave that alone. So in this case, what do we have here when we look at an eight? It's five or better, isn't it? Yes, sir. So we round it, we round it to what? Four. To four, 0.04. And the 0.04 is what you saw up here, right? Oh yeah. That's what you saw on that meter. Now, the, the other one in here, it still said 0.03. It didn't quite round up that high, um, which is a, a reason why I brought the inline and meter is to show you a slight difference there in this one, this one did the rounding like it's supposed to, you know. Now, if, if, if the meter, if this meter had, had more resolution to it, if it had more digits like, uh, like this one does, this, this meter's got more resolution to it. It's got like a, a, third, a third digit. You would get a more accurate number on that if you were reading current. Um, and there is this this meter here. It it does have a milliamp jack down in there. If you see, you see milliamp. Yes, sir. So it's yes. got a milliamp jack there. And this one, this one, this meter would give you a more accurate number if you if you're reading a milliamp directly in line there. Okay. Yeah. So with, with, with all that being said, with all that being said, the the point oh four, and if we go back on with it, and we 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 dial this up to give us uh, twelve and a half amps there, twelve and a half ohms. I'm I'm at volts. I'm sorry. Well, I'm getting tongue tied. Bad. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Let's connect our circuit back. There. There. And let's go up to down here to 12 and a half. We know it takes 12 and a half to give us what we want on the circuit. And we're not reading anything in here. We must have a connection that's just gone. And, and, and we did that connection came out out of the out of the board. This little red connection popped out, so let's 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 zero that back down. This little quick connect here popped out. It popped out of the board. You see that? It popped out. It, it's uh -huh. just, it, it popped out. That's why that's why we weren't getting a current reading. We won't because we we didn't have a connection. So we're gonna bring it back up to 12 and a half now. And you should be reading that 0.04 that we had. So you see there at 12 and a half, which is what it took to give you four volts across them, you get the 0.04 amps on the inline and meter there. Okay, everybody, everybody uh, good with that? Yes. Great. All right, now so let's let's move let's move right along. 
that's that's got enough of it, enough of an illustration uh, for that. Cutting that back off. Back off. So let's go straight to your to your worksheet. I've got your worksheet in Moodle, and let's let's do a couple of them together real quick. Um, so, um, and let's see, we got McGill. Can you hear us pretty good? Yes, sir. Great. Great. Glad you made it. And then and then somebody else has an iPhone. Who is that? So I can count your present. I think that was Victor. Yeah. I think. I don't know. Victor said he was gonna to try to get on with his phone. I don't know if he did or not. Yeah. Vic Victor, are you are you in the session? Somebody has an iPhone and they didn't they didn't they didn't acknowledge their name when they logged in. Can 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 y'all everybody speak up and tell me who's in? We got Nicholas, Benjamin, we got McGill, we got Louise, and who else do we have? There's a fifth person in now, but I don't know who it is. There's a fifth person in, in, in the group now, but I don't know who you are to catch your present. Does it show my name on there? It does. It says Mikey's phone, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does it show my name in there? Who is that, Nicholas? No, Victor. Victor, no, you're you're the one. It doesn't show your name. It just says yeah. iPhone. It just says yeah, iPhone. That's me. That's me. Good. I've been. That's you're the one. I, I'm trying to figure out who who is that because you hadn't said that's anything. Me. Yeah, that's me. Good. Great. Great. Thank you. So is is all is all this making sense, Victor? Yes. Did you get to see the measurements and all I just did? Yes. Sir. Great. Okay. So, so you saw the voltage readings. The re did you see the resistance readings also? Mm hmm. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Now, because I didn't really catch whenever you came in. Yeah, I've been here for a while. Good. Great. 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 Now, so let's let's um let's go back to um. Now, if you when you have resistors that are different values, the the way that you go about solving is this: your your R total is going to be. How do you figure R total? Multi, multi, uh, be your folks. for the resistance for the total resistance. For total resistance, if I go forward, you see that rule right there? That's your rule. You just add the resistors up and it gives you R total. So if you go back to, to this one, how do you figure R total? Add mm. them up. Say it again. You add the four and the 12. Right. Resistance. Four plus 12 equals? 16. Yeah, you just add them up. Four plus 12, that's all. That's all. And even when they're different, you just simply add them up and it gives you our total. Okay? So um, in this case, our total would be the 16. I total, how do, we, how do we calculate I total in this case? The current that flows through all of them. be the total the volts divided by the resistance exactly it's just that simple you take the 12 divided by 16 and it's going to equal 0.75 that's all so to get the current now you got to have our total you don't want to say 12 volts divided by 4 or 12 divided by 12 you're going to get a bad number right because it's not our total yeah that 12 is actually 
across both of them as a whole. So if you're using E total, you got to use R total and that's gonna give you I total, okay? So I have seen people take that 12 and try to divide it by four and get a, get a current reading, but that's not true because you see that voltmeter right there, the, the E1 voltmeter, it, it's across that R1. What's the voltage reading across, across R1? How many volts is it? Three volts. Three. Right, exactly. Now, if you want to confirm that on paper, how could we how could we prove it's three volts by not having a meter? You know, if we don't have a meter, just on paper, how can I say that I know it will be three volts? Times your ampage by your resistance. Exactly. So the amperage would be so you get get your calculator out and go 0 0.75 times four. Times your resistance. Times your resistance. Yeah. So your, your I times R on the triangle the the I times R is going to give you the E. If you cover up the E up top, you cover up E, you cover it up with your finger like that, then the, the, then the formula is going to be I beside R, which means multiply. So in this case, if you say 0.75 times four, what is it? Three. Yeah. Three volts. And then the same current of the 0.75 goes here. 0.75 amps times 12 ohms is what? Nine. Nine volts. Nine volts. So that's how on paper you can prove what it should be. Everybody cool with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's very it's very straightforward, but you but you've got to remember the rules, the rules of series, you know, that the voltage drops, you know, that 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 power supply is going to is going to be divided and not evenly in this case, it's going to be proportional. So that 12 volts is going to split, but it's not going to be six volts and six volts because the resistances of the loads, they're not equal. OK. So the more the more the resistance, the larger the voltage drop that it that it that it produces, okay, or it takes. You know, this is dropping nine, this in here is dropping three, okay? And that's proportional to the resist it's the same ratio of the resistance. If you look at here, you know, four is really a third of twelve, isn't it? Yes. And so three volts is a third of nine. So it the, the ratio is the same. It, it, it's a very definite thing if you have real numbers if you have if you really had resistors of that exact amount then your your voltage difference would be that exact ratio exactly you know so you know, and um but it'll be the voltage drops going to be a proportion of, of the same proportion of whatever the real numbers are on those resistors okay um is everybody comfortable with that yes sir yes Current's the same all throughout the circuit, no matter where you measure that. And we're going to save that. We're going to we're going to go over these examples here in the shop. There's going to be the when you look at your worksheet, the very last two questions in it in Moodle are going to be dealing with a short circuit in a scenario and then an open circuit. Okay, so those two questions. You can answer those once you uh, say Tuesday, we can demonstrate both of those on, on, on a board as a group and let you see really what happens. Um, the question about a short circuit is actually applying to a board that has like four light bulbs on it in the question, in the worksheet. But a short circuit basically is where you bypass a load and instead of you taking the regular path out to the load and back, you're taking a shortcut. The shortcut, it would be a, a wire that these two, they, they, they touch each other and the current flows around the load instead of through the load, through, through a low resistance. If it, has, if it has a direct connection across it with just a piece of a solid wire, that's low resistance. That current's gonna flow really around it, not through the load and that light bulb won't even come on. And so the, the question in, in the worksheet refers to a short circuit around a light bulb, but you're going to have four bulbs in the circuit. One of them's going to have a short circuit. Anyway, we'll save that. We're going to save that to when you can see it in person. 
and it's going to make more sense. You know, here, if you have a break in a wire right over here, that bulb, you know, that bulb's not going to burn. And if you put a voltmeter across where the break is, you'll actually be able to read the battery voltage from, from way over here. That's another one that's hard to wrap, wrap our heads around until we see it. So those two save that for when we're actually in person, okay? Now, let's go, let's actually flip straight to our, um, let's flip right straight to our, our Moodle, work, Moodle worksheet here. And, and by the way, let me take you back out and just show you what we have here. Um, well, I don't need to do that. The worksheet is in, is in, is in week number four. If, I, if you go, uh, we go back out to here. Uh, do y'all see, do y'all see the welcome mat there? Yes, sir. Yeah. You do? So if you go down in here for week number four, there goes your worksheet right there. So I'm gonna have a paper copy here. I'm gonna go through so I can write on it, but that, that's, your, that's your assignment for this chapter. Um, now let's go, um, now. <clears throat> I love this camera because it, it's got it's got a flexible gooseneck on it and it lets me do whatever I need to do. Now, y'all help me here. Can y'all see the circuit good? Yes, sir. Yes. We got a 150 volt power supply, a five ohm resistor, 10 ohm, and a 15. Now I want to know, I want y'all to tell me how do I answer these questions. Now these up in here are gonna be easy for you. It, you're dealing with a 10 ohm resistor and 1.7 amps, it wants to know what's the voltage drop. I don't need to go over that, you know, you can do that. Here you got a resistor 51 volt and three amps through it and it wants to know what's the resistance of it in you know, ohms, you know, that's easy, okay. Here, let's do a whole circuit together. So I wanna answer and say, what is R total? So how do I figure that? You add them up. Exactly. You add them up, so it should be thirty, correct? Right. Now I want, I, yeah, and I prefer to actually see, to actually see your math in Moodle in in that box. So if you will, if you will humor me, say humor the instructor. Let's say five plus ten plus fifteen equals what? You said thirty. Yeah. 30 ohms, unless you can find the symbol. Um, McGill, I noticed that you actually found a symbol. How did you do that on, on, on your on your computer? Um, I think I just clicked on, uh, it's got like a little symbol on the side that has like a, I can't really explain it. It's, it's got like a little option where you can click where it has more. Okay on uh, the little where it has paragraph and then it has a uh, whole bunch of little icons uh, above that and I think I clicked on it and then I clicked on one that had a symbol on it as a symbol and I clicked on that and then I then then I looked for it it's kind of hard to find you know but I found okay. it if you find if you if you find the, the omega symbol you know use it if not <laughs> put the word on like that and then you know of course you're not going to be able to type into these blanks There'll be a screenshot of this in Moodle, and then there's going to be another whole screen below it that you're going to have to type all your answers in. Okay, so you know it, it would be you know you would provide that in the next box. So, what what is what is I total? How do we calculate I total? Yeah. So I have I have a R total, a R total of 30 ohms, and I, I want I total. So what 
What, how do I do that? Uh, we're looking for I, right? I'm gonna cover up I, so, so what is I in this case? So do you divide it? Right, you divide what? Uh, 150. Right. Uh, divide 30. Exactly. 150 over 30, and that's gonna be what? Five, five, well, five. Okay. I think. So five, five what? Be five amps. Right, five amps. Yeah. Right, so it's five amps. So provide that in the box below, you know, in, in the screen that you can draw in. And then what would be EE1? If, if I measured voltage across that one, you know, if I take my meter and I go literally like this, and I check across this one, what, what would the voltmeter read? Fifty. Right now, when we take and we cover up E here, E equals what? Five times R. Right, I times R, and so I is is five amps, right? And then you know R R is what? Ten ohms. So we're going to say E one equals. If we say I, it would be the five amps times the five ohms and it would equal what? 25. 25. 20, 25 what? Volts. Volts, yeah. So, and the reason I'm asking that, not, not to be silly here, but some people put the wrong thing in there or maybe they don't put anything. So if you will, please put the units out there that, that, that I'll know that you're realizing that you're dealing with voltage, non-amps, you know. So if you'll put the units out there, I'll, I'll appreciate that. Okay, E2, somebody tell me how to do E2. Take five amps times 10, the resistance in 10 ohms. And so what will it be? That equal 50 volts. 50 volts, that's right. That's correct. And 50 volts. Right, 50 volts. So you would read 50 volts, you would read double across that as you would across this one because look, that resistance is double, isn't it? So it's proportional. It's, this is double the resistance of that. And it, may, it would make sense that you would read double the voltage across yeah. it too, okay? And, and then E3, that, that was very good. I'm impressed, okay? How about E3? How do you, how do you calculate E3? You do five amps, five amps times 15 ohms. Exactly. Equals what? 75 volts. Exactly. Correct. Now, any questions? Oh, so that's that's really what you would get. Seriously, you would read you would read twenty five volts across that one. You'd read fifty across that one. You'd read seventy five across that one. Now, what would you read across two? These two. Seventy-five volt. Exactly. Now listen. Now think about this now. This this stuff makes a lot of sense. Seventy-five volts across those two. Now look, it's actually it's the same thing as what you read across this one, right? Seventy-five, seventy-five, yeah. right? Now look, yeah. that's fi that's fifteen ohms, isn't it? What's that R total right there? Fifteen. Fifteen. So if you had a fifteen and a fifteen, it would be yeah. the same same thing, right? Yeah. 75 and 75, which is, you know, half of 150, ohm. right? So all this stuff is very logical. Ohm's law is very, very logical. Now, if this, is, if this happens to be four and a half ohms, and that's 10 and a half ohms, and that's uh, 16 ohms, 
it's going to throw the numbers off a little bit, but, but it's going to be an exact proportion to the real numbers. So the, the actual voltages would actually be thrown off in the same proportion of whatever tolerance is on those resistors. Does that make sense? Sir? It's still exact. It's still, if you took the real numbers and you, and you did, and if, this was, you know, if, if that was a, you know, four and a half ohms and you put four and a half in there, if you measured it and it was four and a half and you put that in there, it would give you an, ex, an exact voltage that you would really measure out there. It would be dead on, okay? So if you're dealing with real numbers, then your calculations are going to be exact. Then your meter, your meter is going to agree with it. Now, then you throw something else in the, in the mix with the meter and, and that the meter itself, the meters themselves have actually a tolerance to them. Okay. Because the meters, when you, when you get a handbook out for either one of them meters and you look at the specifications, it will tell you on AC volts, it will be accurate to within, within so many percent. So they, they really have to tell you that there is a tolerance on the readings of the meter, okay? So you may put two of these meters side by side and get a very, very teeny tiny bit of a difference because of that tolerance. And that's just real world life. That's just the way life is, right? You know, um, so they're honest with you when they, when, when they give you the ratings, um, you know, of the meters. Yeah. Was, was somebody talking to me or, 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 or to somebody else? Uh, I'm sorry, that's my radio. Okay, that's cool. You, you're making good money there, man. <laughs> making that money. A little bit. Need to buy a saw fish plate one day. Yes, sir. Tell me when. Yeah. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Victor's the one making all that money. Who? Victor. Victor. Yeah, I Victor. know. I heard. That's Victor right. Never le Victor never leaves his place. He never leaves. Has he got it? He got his mail. He got his mailbox out there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I made five dollars an hour. <laughs> now, you know you're not supposed to be lying there. <laughs> Hey, you ain't never made five dollars. Yeah, that's what I'm making right now. But I tell you what, now, seriously, back in um, now you may laugh at this, but back in, and I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see my face, my expression here. <laughs> 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 For real, I'm gonna, I'm telling myself how old I am. The first job I ever had was in 1977. In 77, I was in the ninth grade, and I got a job working on a farm cropping tobacco. Y'all know what tobacco is. I don't know if you know what cropping it means, but you get these stalks with all these leaves, and you go around there. If that's a stalk with a lot of leaves, you go around there, and you pop, 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 and you pop them leaves off like that, and you snap them off. You put a bundle in a clip and it goes up, first wheel harvest up top and the girl takes it and ties it with a string, okay, on a stick. So I worked on the Ferris wheel harvester, crop and tobacco in 77. And guess how much we got paid an hour? $3. Two. $2 an hour. And that was a going rate. That's what everybody was making, $2 an hour in, in 1977. Now, in somewhere around 79, minimum wage went up. And th about that time, then I got a public job in, in a plant. Around 79, I got a job at a place over on uh, Warsaw Highway where Garland Shirt Factory is now, or the uh, the uh, Centos Uniform Place. Yep. Over on, okay, in that building, it was called Laura Lee Outerwear, and I worked in there a hanging stock in 79 or 80. When I was 15 years old, I, I got a work permit. I went in there, and I, then I finally made minimum wage, and it was about 2:30 something then, you know. So it was, so I've seen it go up a lot, you know. But, but I've, I've been working since '77, and um, anyway, I just figured I'd throw that in a little, little, little uh, trivia there, a little uh, nostalgia.
Yeah. <laughs> Little nostalgia. Big money. Big money. I started saving money in 77. I did. I ain't kidding. I opened up a savings account, and I'm still with the same bank, man. <laughs> it's, it's BB and T now. But uh, it was East Coast Federal then, savings and loan. So um, this circuit here, this is on your worksheet also. This is a paper copy of what you'd have if you were on campus, but I got it in Moodle now. So we're going we're gonna to solve for the unknown values if, if I total is 10 amps. And so it wants to know what is E1. Okay. Can y'all see the resistance there? Four ohms. That's four ohms. Four ohms, and you, you have an I total of ten amps. So it's it's giving you it's giving you some information there. And we're looking for E. Look, if I cover up E, what does it equal? I times R. I times R. Okay. So we, we have we have I and we have R. So so what what would E total be? I mean what would E one be? Forty. Forty. Forty what? Volt. Volt. Right. Now, E G. E G is G for generator. Generator voltage. So what what is the total voltage? Uh, when they're not when they're not telling us. If we plug that number into here and say 40 volts, and we have 80 volts here, what would this have to be? 120. Exactly. 120. Exactly. Because you know the rules of series, and that's that's why you can answer that question, because you because you got it really sunk in good. Now, great, I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. Woohoo! Okay. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to eat a fish plate now. I'm going to celebrate, okay? So... <laughs> I'm gonna go see, try to go see Francisco tomorrow at Turlins and Lumber Mill and do a tour and take some pictures over there of, uh, of their their plant, and then then go eat some fish. Okay. So, um, how about our total? Uh, and they want to know R two. What is R two? We, we, maybe we need to do that first, huh? Yeah. It should just divide. Right. So R, if I cover up R, it's going to be what? 80. Oh. 80, 80 volt. By 10. 80 divided by 10. Divided by, yeah, divided by 10 amps, right? Yeah. And that's going to equal what? Eight. 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 Eight what? Eight what? Ohms. 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 All right. Eight ohms. So, so what, what's our total? Twelve ohms. <laughs> How Twelve. many? Twelve ohms. Twelve. Exactly. Very good. So basically what we're doing here is you, you're given now a little more challenging scenario to see, can you juggle, do you know how to juggle that, the Ohm's law? Do you know how to juggle that around and use the pieces in the puzzle to, to fill in the rest of the puzzle? So you're, you're filling the puzzle in, but you're using the pieces that you have in Ohm's law to, to complete that puzzle, if you will, okay? Make sense? Yes, sir. I'm happy, man. Y'all yes, really, y'all really, y'all really doing it great. And then let's let's you want to do another one? Let's do another one here. Do y'all have any questions at this point? No, sir. Okay, good. No. So, so someone do all the talking. I, I'm not going to do any talking. You, you teach me. You teach me. 
because I, I, I'm going to say, I don't know any of this. I've, ne I've never seen what this looks, this looks like French to me, you know. So we're searching for what, E1 and for E2, right? Oh. Oh. Um, can I see that uh, graph again? <laughs> what? You ain't got that thing memorized yet? Come on now. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm just on, kidding. Victor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <You're> slashing, Victor. <laughs> hey, did y'all get did y'all get one of my business cards? Yeah. You did. Yeah, my I ain't got more. Cards, you flip over on the back on my business cards, you got Ohm's Law on there. Did y'all get one of them? No, I haven't got one. Hey. Remind me, look, remind me Tuesday. You ain't got one yet, Miguel? Look, you see that card? It's you flip it over black. and look at what I got on there. Ain't that cool? No, I definitely didn't get one of those. I'll see you this afternoon, Mr. Derwood. Okay. I can give you one tonight. I got them on my car. On my car. All right. But General General Refrigeration had some cars from General Refrigeration. They had that on there. And what I did is that when I got my new cars printed, I had them here at the college to actually print that. I sent them a scan, and I had them to add that in the back of mine. And I, I thought that was cool because it gives you the triangles that are easy to work with, plus you get the whole the whole pie. You're going to be, believe me, you're going to be using more of these with the square roots and stuff. I'm going to give you some stuff that you'll have to use those. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, remind me, I got them in a bag here on my cart. So, so I, I, I keep them with me. All right. So, um, who, who can explain, um, who can tell me? how to solve this stuff. 128 uh, divided by 10, you get E1. Now, you said 128 divided by 10 ohms is going to give you what? Uh, I was gonna give you no, 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 no. I already got no. it. Look, no. that that one twenty eight is not gonna be across that resistor, is it? Ten. You ca you're calculating, you're calculating yeah. amps by saying E over R. You're calculating amps. Can't do that. Hold on. Now look, you gotta find uh. You, you're looking for E. We're going to cover E up, so you got to do this, right? Yeah. The amps. You don't know your amps yet. Right, so you got to calculate that. That's where it gets a little more challenging there. So, really, what we got to know first is what? We got to know I total, don't we? Yeah. And so I total, if I cover it up, is going to be what? E equals R, 128, uh, divided by 10. Uh, that's divided by 40 ohms. Right. It has to be, it has to be uh, R total. 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 Total, total resistance. Look, that 128 is across both at the same time. It's across the combination. The one, the one twenty eight is not across one. The one twenty eight is across two. Mm -hmm. So look, the, the the E total equals. Well, hold on. I total is going to equal E total over R total. I total, you got You got to find that would be E total over R total. And then you said that our total was what? 40. 40. Exactly. So 40 ohms. And then we know that the 128 is the E total. 
So it's going to be the 128. Over the 40 ohms, right? And so, so what does that come down to for, for current? 3.2. How much? 3. Point what? 3.2 amps. Exactly. Yeah. Now, so, so 3.2 would be your I total. And now, now we have an I total, and now we can calculate the voltage drop across this one, right? You multiply? Right. 3.2 times 10. So the, the, the voltage drop here is going to be, it's going to be what now? The 3.2 times 10. the resistance. 10, 10 ohms. And that's going to be what? 32 volts. 32 volts. Cool. Okay. And that, that will be E1. And then E2 would be what? Be 3.2 amps times 30 ohms. Right. And that give you 96 volts. 96. Now to prove that, what what's 32 plus 96? 128. Right. It's exactly that, isn't it? Yep. This stuff, this stuff is very, very exact. Okay. Um, everybody comfortable with that? Yep. Yes, sir. Any, any concerns? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. So you should be, you should be really great. I mean, I, I'm looking for all 100s. Seriously. But you, you've got, here's what you got to be careful of, and, 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 and it always happens. It always happens. Uh, you have someone that's going to try to use the 128 volt in a calculation with, 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 a, with, with, one, with one component. And you can't. You can't do it that way. Not in series. And when you get the parallel, then it's going to be a whole nother ball game. The next chapter, four, is on parallel. You know, so if it was parallel, you know, for instance, this circuit in parallel would be would, would look like this. Is you would have a 128 volt. So here's what it would look like in parallel. Mr. Derwood. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I have got to go back to sleep now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I. We're, we're done. That's, you'll find that chapter, you. chapter four. You, you got any questions, uh, Louise? No. No, I'm good. Okay, great. Great. Well, I hope you ha ha have a good weekend. And uh, let me know. Let me know if you got any questions at all. Um, you know, I I'll accept calls through the weekend. If you, I don't think you're going to have any problem with it at all. Because um, you, you, you've got a real good handle on it. And so... <clears throat> we'll we'll see you we'll hopefully see you Tuesday here in the shop if you can make it hopefully you can and um yeah. and, and you'll do this stuff hands on the lab you're setting up now you're you, you know you're wiring your light bulbs in series and so you're gonna do the experiments of, of what you're seeing now yeah, yeah. okay All yeah. Right. have a good get some good Thank rest you. be safe now Thank you okay have a good weekend thanks have a have a blessed one. But uh, but there, Nicholas, I see you're still on. But this circuit, if it was parallel, then that 128 volt right there, you would read that voltage across this one. You would read 128 to 128. It would be the same voltage. Yeah. 
so but your currents would be different you know if you had i say a 10 on here yeah. and a 30 on here then you'd have a different amount of current flowing through each one it would be separate branch currents and this is chapter four right here you know so you know for cat for voltage it, it would be 128 across both and your current through this will be the 128 over 10. this current would be the 128 over 30 and those two branch currents you know your i total when it gets to here it would split and it would be i1 and when it splits it would be i2 i1 and i2 i1 plus i2 equals i total so those two currents would be in would be separate and different and the two together would equal i total it was what comes from the battery and so that that's that's what's coming up in chapter four there you know so but anyway but I, I know I know you've got a good grip on it because every every everything you said is, is correct. So I mean, you yep. know, you've got you got a very good handle on it, and I'm I'm, I'm glad to hear I'm glad happy to hear that. Yep. So you like it pretty good? Yep, I think so. Good. Just ha hang with us and keep going and get all you can here, and just keep getting all the electrical you can. That's that's the main thing in industry that this, this where there's a lack at. Yeah. Is electrical knowledge. And we, you know, we've added, we've added an electrical, are you in the electrical degree program or are you in the industrial systems? I'm in the HVAC. HVAC, okay, that's good. That's good. You'll make a lot of money in that too. Real good. You'll stay busy. So all of this stuff comes into play. I don't care what, what field you get into, it, it all of it is, you know, applies. So, um, yeah, you, ha you ha have, a, have a nice weekend. And, um, yeah, you too. Thank, thanks for joining, and I'm uh, glad to have y'all. Okay. And have, have a blessed weekend. Thank you. And for, for anyone else that's watching um, that may not be a part of, of our class, um, again, uh, my name is Derwood, Derwood King with Sampson Community College. You can reach me at, at uh, email dking at sampsoncc.edu. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. We'd like to have you come join classes here on campus. Uh, we're doing sort of a mix, uh, sort of a hybrid now of shop on, you know, shop on campus and then doing lectures like this. And uh, at some point, we're hoping to get back to 100% on, on campus. We hope to. And um, but be glad to have you come out and sign up for some classes and get all the details and and you know and, and get credit for it, get a, get a certificate or a degree. We have an electrical certificate. We've got an electrical degree now, and we have the industrial systems degree. The industrial systems degree includes a lot of electrical. It's got hydraulics, pneumatics. It's got machine shop, um, a little bit of welding, a little bit of refrigeration um, mechanisms. That's got a lot of things for a multi-craft type job, which is what most plants want in Sampson County. They, they like to have a person that's, that's uh, versatile. And that's what our industrial systems program does is it gets you multi-craft and that's what again most people want most plants want that if you'd like to go stronger on electrical go in the electrical degree and what i'm teaching goes into that degree plus we have another another uh, another set of classes that go into it that uh that give you uh a more robust um electrical uh, skills um so um and, and it's a combination of industrial electrical that i teach plus some commercial stuff that, that that will broaden you out um electrically and, um, and then the uh, the hvac degree too so which is very good but i think thank you for watching and uh drop me a line it, it, I, i'm probably glad to answer any questions and um and hope hopefully you know you can sign up for some classes if, if you're if you're someone that's not affiliated with the school get yourself a certificate or degree so thank you thank you and God bless you. Thank you for watching.